Coming to you from the Hudson Media Group studio, this is Talking Politics, and I am New Jersey's premier journalist and the sworn enemy of all the local liberals, toxic progressives, social justice clowns, and woke fools, Fernando Uribe. Hope you all had a wonderful week. Certainly there is a lot to discuss, so let's get started. Here's what I'm thinking about right now. Folks, in the mid-2000s, I don't know about you, but I enjoyed watching Chappelle's show on Comedy Central. And for two and a half seasons, Dave Chappelle put on arguably some of the best skits ever in comedic history, whether it was the black portrayal of President George W. Bush at the time or the N-word family skit, which was pretty funny, I think, in totality. And also as far as the racial draft and even the segment with Wayne Brady. Folks, these were iconic skits that made us laugh on a weekly basis. And of course, right after 2005, Dave Chappelle made sort of like the surprise decision to walk away from Hollywood, to walk away from money and fame and just to sort of, you know, have peace and quiet. And you know what? I respect that. Years later, Dave Chappelle has returned to do a lot of different specials on streaming services, specifically Netflix. And his latest one, The Closer, is generating a lot of attention. And folks, let me just preface this by saying that one of the reasons I think Dave Chappelle and his legacy has endured is because, aside from the fact he's rich, you know, Dave Chappelle appeals to a lot of different demographics and more importantly, sort of regular everyday working class people, regardless of like age, uh, race, ethnicity or gender. And his humor is great. It's funny. It's sort of like everyday humor that we sort of think about, but sometimes we're afraid to sort of say out loud, either in public or even in our own dining room tables in the privacy of our own homes. But the latest special on Netflix has created quite a stir. And of course, you know, who has to uh, bitch and moan? Yes, folks, the Alphabet Army. Of course, the LGBT, Q, whatever, A, B, C, D, whatever other consonant you want to add to the acronym now, is having a hissy fit about Dave Chappelle and some of his comments as it pertains to trans people and, of course, other uh, minorities. Now, folks, let me just preface this by saying that, you know, I'm Hispanic and I'm brown, just like Dave Chappelle is black. And here's something that maybe is uncomfortable to say publicly, but I'm not you know, afraid to say it because you, you know me, I tend to be the voice of the voiceless here on this program. But within the black and brown community, the idea of trans people isn't something that's openly welcomed. Now, I'm tolerant. Um, I'm all about live and let live, you know. Listen, folks, I understand that this is a community that gets marginalized, okay? No one's ever gonna discriminate or no one's ever gonna dislike Fernando Uribe for being a straight male. There's a plethora of reasons to dislike me, but being straight isn't one of them. So I understand that. And I understand that I'll never be discriminated against because I'm heterosexual. But for friends of mine who are who identify as LGBT, I understand. If you're gay, you're lesbian, bisexual, trans, whatever. I understand. You'll be marginalized and in some parts of the country, you know, even victimized. And that's a problem. And that's something that I do not agree with wholeheartedly. We should not be engaging in bigotry, acts of violence against anybody. You know, live and let live. As long as you're not bothering me, I'm not going to bother you. Okay? I don't walk around sort of, you know, uh, you know, beating my chest about oh, how great it is to be heterosexual and I'm not sticking my tongue down my significant other's throat every time I'm walking down the street. I don't really care if other people do it either, but, you know, it's something you probably should refrain from. But the point is, folks, that the comments Chappelle made, I think, are comments that regular everyday people are feeling. It doesn't make us bigoted or transphobic or homophobic. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a, cl a clinician, and my PhD is not in psychology or psychiatry. But you don't need to be a clinician to understand that for some people, understanding you know transgendered uh, individuals is something that isn't always welcomed. And again, it doesn't make us prejudiced or bigoted. It just doesn't. We're just choosing not to accept the fact that for whatever reason, uh, you're choosing to change your gender. I mean, whatever. And folks, by the way, there's only two genders. You know, unless you fail high school biology. Right? That's all there is. It's not 25 genders like a lot of these activists or all the local woke fools will have you believe. But again, let's get back to Chappelle. Now, overall, it was a very funny documentary. And of course, all of Chappelle's uh, material has been great throughout the years. Does he know what he's doing? Absolutely. Does he intend to be polarizing because he knows it'll get clicks and views and buys on Netflix? Of course. Folks, you know, a lot of people sort of talk to me off the air and say, you know, Fernando, we're not, we know you're not stupid. We know you, you know that you're, you know what you're doing, okay? 
We know exactly what you're doing. We know exactly what your intent is. And hey, that's brilliant. You know how to sort of thread the line and walk that fine line without sort of crossing it. Now, some of the local liberals and, again, the toxic progressives and the social justice clowns and woke fools will tell you otherwise. But they're clueless and they're useless humans. So, quite frankly, I don't, their opinion is irrelevant. But, folks, when it comes to people like Chappelle or opinion journalists like myself and we have opinions and we formulate them and we bring facts to the table, well, I'm sorry. It's not something we should be, I don't know, vilifying. And, of course, this past week there were outcries whether it was from GLAD or other LGBT organizations, demanding the cancellation of, of Dave Chappelle, demanding that Netflix remove The Closer from its Netflix archives. Folks, it's the number one most viewed show on Netflix. The reason people are watching Netflix is not just because of great programming like Dave Chappelle, but other important documentaries and concerts and comedy series and things of that nature. But let's get back again to the reality of this absurd cancel culture that we're living in today. Folks, whether it's on the left and sometimes on the right, I'll be, I'll be fair about it, cancel culture is out of control. And Dave Chappelle obviously was smart in his response where, hey, you want to cancel me? doesn't matter to me. I got paid already. And that's a great response to a community that, quite frankly, has a hissy fit over anything. Folks, again, I talk about the alphabet army all the time, and I don't do it in a mean-spirited way. I talk about it in a way that seems to be, I think, normal, everyday type of commonsensical you know, methodology. And sometimes it's overkill. Folks, when we look at the acronym itself, I mean, Jesus, LGBTQ. Folks, if you're gay, you're queer. If you're queer, you're gay. Stop with the semantics. I don't want to hear this, well, Fernando, you know, just because you're gay doesn't mean you're queer. And and just because you're queer doesn't mean... Folks, look up the words in the dictionary. It's not difficult, okay? Let's stop with the semantics. Let's stop with this virtue signaling. Let's stop with this pandering. That's exactly what these organizations and these activist groups live for every day. They live to bitch, and they bitch to live. I don't know about you, I'm tired of it. Dave Chappelle looks at this and he probably laughs. I have to laugh at it as well. But folks at a local, even statewide, even national level, we're seeing cancel culture still permeating, whether it's in pop culture, whether it's in public schools, whether it's in government, whether it's in media. Folks, enough is enough. Live and let live. People can have opinions. As long as you're not crossing the line and saying anything inflammatory or blatantly bigoted, prejudiced, or downright discriminatory, lighten up. Go read a book. Go have a drink. Go get laid. Whatever it is you need to do, just live your life and stop your bitching and moaning because, quite frankly, it's become quite tiresome. And that's what I'm thinking about right now. Did you know Jersey City was one of the first in the country to take action on the coronavirus? Face masks mail to everyone. The first to offer free COVID testing. And Mayor Fulop also got direct cash relief to help residents pay rent and small businesses stay open. Now he's working to vaccinate as many residents as possible with vaccine centers in every neighborhood and free Uber rides for seniors. Steve Phillip is my kind of mayor. On this week's edition of the five-time award-winning podcast, Talk in the Hudson, which you can listen to live every week at www.blogtalkradio.com slash Hudson, was one of my regulars tap into Jersey City columnist Al Sullivan, who also happens to be, in my opinion, the dean of Hudson County Journalism. We spoke for over an hour on a plethora of different issues, and here are some highlights for your consideration. First and foremost, we talked about the impact that social media is having on the upcoming city council election in Jersey City. Whether it's about the wards or the at-large candidates, everyone has a lot to say on social media. And we sort of broke down whether or not it's an effective tool in getting out the vote leading up to election day. But I'll, I'll continue to say this as I do every election cycle, whether it's about local stuff or even statewide stuff. It's, you know, I think we have to get away from this premise that when people are posting videos on social media, whether it's on campaigns, stops, or Facebook Live, or whatever, I always tell people, that's great. You get traffic. You get views. That doesn't always translate to feet going to the polls. And I think people have to kind of get that into their heads because for some reason, a lot of people I talk to say, oh, man, you know, Gilmore's social media is really strong. Uh, you know, Ga- I mean, listen, yes. I ran into I ran into Gilmore and, and Gadsden Sunday at Liberty State Park when I when I when I did the breast cancer walk. I do it every year, but they were there walking around, campaigning, shaking hands. You know, they saw me, and I'm on good terms with them. They like me. You know, whatever, fine. I've interviewed them, and you know, I I could see people going up to them. It wasn't about so much you know Gadsden and, and Gilmore. 
you know, waiting to get approached. Like, I'm sorry, waiting for them to go approach people. People were approaching them. So I'm always like, hey, listen, let's see what happens with turnout. But let's let's stop with this 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 fixation. Oh, well, you know, the social media is what drives uh, uh, ballots. That's not true, Al. And I say it to people all the time. Stop thinking that just because there's 25 lawn signs on a block that you're getting 25 votes. That doesn't mean anything. Well, I mean, what it means, these things, you know, social media has become the new fixation for, especially for progressives. Okay. Um, they don't uh, embrace the old school of get out the vote type concept, which is you go to people's houses, you talk to them, then you go back on election day and you say, do you need a ride to the poll? Can I help you? Or you know, can I help you with your, uh, what do you call it, your mail-in vote, et cetera, et cetera. That, that's where the machine has the advantage. That's where, you know, Philip learned that early on, well before he became mayor, that you have to build the organization, getting people out there to talk to other people, to to actually interact constantly with them, not just on, you know, some sort of issue, but on the day-to-day basis. Um, and that's where Philip is, you know, has an advantage and his ticket has an advantage. Um, but that doesn't overcome a negative perception. And, you know, what we're hearing is about Rivera and Waterman is that there's some sort of real community issues concerning them. And I don't know what completely, I've heard some of it today, um, you know, but there's that you need to control as a candidate despite your machine. And the problem is here in this election, you know, Waterman, Rivera, and some of the other full of people may take for granted the fact that they're on a machine and believe that that's going to get them elected it it's not you know it works both ways um social media can s- spread a negative in a way that you might not be able to control and that's the advantage of a social media campaign um it doesn't get out the vote but it can certainly hurt you if you don't respond to it secondly we talked about the mayoral election between the incumbent mayor stephen phillip and his challenger lewis spears with less than 20 days to go until Election Day on November the 2nd, it seems like Lewis Spears isn't gaining any traction. And without equivocation, it seems like, in all likelihood, that Stephen Phillip will win a third term as mayor of Hudson County's largest city. But again, Al and I broke down exactly what Lewis's chances are leading up to maybe pull off some sort of upset or even make it close on Election Day. Let's hear what we had to say about it. Well, um, obviously, next week is the... Um, at large debate, as I mentioned, that I'll be moderating. But the very next day, I believe, I could be wrong, is the mayoral debate between the incumbent Stephen Fulop and his challenger, Louis Spears. Uh, um, you know, it's interesting. I mean, it, it's, it's almost a foregone conclusion that, that Steve's going to win again. What the margin will be, we don't know. Uh, could it be a, a, a massacutus type slaughter? I don't know. Um, but I'm hearing different I – mean, I'm, I'm hearing different – Sources tell me that there, there, there are pockets of the city that look at Lewis as like, wow, good for this guy standing up and, and running. I just think he got into the race too late, and I tell people that. And I think overall, I, again, I don't think it's uh, – this is a rocket science. I think I, it, Steve's going to win. The question is, is it going to be a Matakutis-type margin, or do you think Lewis Spears could give the mayor a little bit of a scare? Well, I think we're, we're. I think he's had some things not happened over the last couple of weeks. For instance, their attack on Spears about his property. Again, it's very similar, to like the Gilmore thing, and the attack on him as being a Republican. Um, appears like they're picking on 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 the, him, and that will galvanize. He was at the Gilmore event today. He was speaking at the Gilmore event today. So you got these sort of, um, this becomes a, you know, they're picking on an African-American here. And um, if, you know, you see this as intimidation by a very powerful mayor, um, I think Spears will do better than people expect. 
I don't think he'll win, but I think the negativity that's gone against him will galvanize the African-American community is something I think that Fulop needed to avoid and he played into it. And I don't, I don't think it was Spears or the, you know, the African-Americans logic. I think it was a mistake by Fulop by allowing them to go for the throat of Spears. In other words, you can't, sometimes it's better to just, for, you know, let Spears run and don't pay attention to him rather than appear like you're kicking him when he's down. Once again, these are the exclusives you can listen to every single week on Blog Talk Radio. And of course, I want to thank Al Sullivan for his contributions to the program on a regular basis. And now some local stories for your consideration. And a special thank you to John Hines with the Hudson County View for his report on this story. And there was an editorial published this week on the Hudson County View by one of the members of the Progressive Democrats of Hudson County. My God, one of the more insufferable groups you'll ever hear from. And of course, the, you know, the perpetual campaigner and the ongoing, you know, sort of whiner, Hector Orsiguera. And of course, he detailed in this editorial why he feels that Jersey City voters should not elect Hudson County Democratic Organization chairwoman Amy DeGeese to one of the at-large council seats in Jersey City. But one of the things that really stood out for me again is him, him saying that Amy has no discernible record of leadership on any issue, despite being politically involved her entire life. Not once has she involved herself in the issues of the day, nor has she leveraged her considerable power to help everyday people. Well, folks, that's just not true. She's been a teacher forever. And I know that she's a regular on my podcast. And some of you out there might say, well, Fernando, maybe you, it's hard for you to be objective here. No, it's not. I'm being as unbiased as I possibly can. She's campaigned to be on the school board because she cares about the quality of education for kids in Jersey City. So to say something like that, Hector, again, makes you look like the fool that you consistently look like. The idea that she doesn't care or get involved in issues of the day, of course she does. She's an educator. She's a teacher. She ran for school board. She was on the school board. She, she decided to step down when she became chairwoman of the Hudson County Democratic Organization, arguably one of the more powerful Democratic County organizations in the state of New Jersey. And what did she do in 2018? Hey, she mobilized well over 60,000 votes for U.S. Senator Robert Menendez during his reelection campaign. So to say that Amy doesn't have any discernible, you know, examples of leadership, well, that's just not true. I just listed two things right now, and that's only within like 90 seconds. But folks, you get the you, you get the idea. People like Hector Segura and the Progressive Democrats of Hudson County are perhaps the most useless humans you'll ever come across. Their usual bitching and moaning about whatever it is that you know. I don't know, maybe they didn't get the right temperature of milk when they went to Starbucks or whatever other bitching and moaning that they engage in. But let me just keep going a little bit further because this is where it gets a little funny for me. And here's one that uh, really, really kind of like made me laugh is the idea, and again here, let's I think as we go down a little bit more, and it's a pretty long editorial, as we all know, Hector Seguera bloviates and is so long-winded, I mean, you could power a ship with the amount of hot air coming out of his mouth. But what was really interesting is the idea that he feels that the moderator for the upcoming debate, again, for at-large candidates is led by a right-wing blogger and a psychophant. Wow, those are big words for you, Hector. I mean, did you have to look those up? Because I already knew them. Now, folks, this is the thing. You know, and, and this is my public plea to people like Hector Seguera. You write long-winded editorials like this and you come out looking like an ass, which is not hard for you because you do it on a daily basis. Bro, if you want the smoke and you want to come on my show and debate me and talk about issues, you're more than welcome because I don't duck anybody. The problem is that will require you to have a spine, and we all know you don't have one. It's easy for you, and folks, and this is the thing, that you know what? Social media has made it very easy for men and women today to sort of disrespect people outright. But I know for a fact that Hector Segura wouldn't say this to my face. I just know it because it's punks like him that make it a point to live on social media and beat your chest and be a tough guy. Folks, we all know the types, all right? And when you write a long-winded editorial like this, trashing someone like Amy DeGees, who's a very noble person, she takes the time to come on my podcast every single month, and again, she has examples and proof of leadership, whether it's running campaigns, not just her own now, but running campaigns for a U.S. Senate seat or campaigning for U.S. Representative Albio Ceres, or, for example, municipal committee uh, elections as well, Amy has a track record. Amy has a track record about 
caring about everyday issues. She's a teacher. She's a homeowner. Okay? She's looking to be a mom, right? So all of these things tell me that she cares about issues that affect everyday people. What's Hector Segura doing? Oh, I'm sorry, leading a, you know, a, a protest to Amy DeJesus' dad's house in the middle of the night, screaming and hollering, harassing Tom and his wife or other elderly senior citizens on that block? Wow, Hector, you're a big man, bro. You got a set on you that, man, you are like the epitome of bravery. No, nah, bro, you're the poster child of cowardice. I'll call you out on it, and believe me, I'm not going to stop going to town on you until you have a spine and come on my show. So you want to come at me? Not a problem. You won't say that to my face, and you won't say it on my show. So the challenge is there. I'll be waiting. But folks, we'll probably be waiting until the New York Mets win a World Series if you expect Hector Segura to have ever spine about anything. Staying in Jersey City, and of course, folks, you know, social justice clowns and the woke fools continue to strike again. And a nice job by Daniel Ulua from the Hudson County View for his report on this story. There was an anti-ICE rally outside of Hudson County Correctional Facility, and they were calling for the release of detainees. Now, a rally against uh, ICE was held outside the Hudson County Correctional Facility in Kearney last week, calling for the release of detainees as opposed to transferring them out of state. Uh, the North Jersey Democratic Socialists of America folks, another garbage organization full of garbage humans, let's be honest, uh, and other like-minded activists, you know, clueless, useless humans too, also asked the Hudson County Board of Commissioners that they support their demand that ICE release rather than transfer prisoners. The North Jersey DSA said, quote, when they renewed the contract, they insisted they were afraid of transfers, and transfers began happening, and they have literally done nothing. According to Wit Strub Wit, Jesus Christ, nine months to come up with a name, the best you come up with is Wit. My God, these parents. I'm telling you, he's an activist with North Jersey DSA. And of course, they've also gone on to say, quote, we've asked him to intervene to write a letter calling for releases. Even the Essex County commissioners did that calling for releases. Folks, once again, maybe these fools failed high school history, maybe they failed world history, but folks, sovereignty and the preservation of borders is something that every civilized society engages in right? It's written into our most sacred legal document here, the United States Constitution. But don't tell that to, to, to these activists, to Democrat socialists or Hudson County progressives, because these are clearly fools who didn't pass high school history, who clearly slept through that class where we talked about the Constitution and the importance of sovereignty, you know, preservation of borders and how enforcing immigration laws is something that, again, any country in the Western Hemisphere engages in, not just the United States, but it also happens across the Atlantic in Europe as well. But again, leave it to these uh, clueless progressives and woke fools and social justice clowns to be oblivious to what's right in front of their faces. We'll see what happens, folks, at, at the Carney facility, but I doubt they're going to make any traction anytime soon. Now let's move to the peninsula city of Bayonne. And a special thank you to Al Sullivan with Tap Into Bayonne for his report on this story. Now, apparently, a Board of Education candidate and also a recent graduate of Bayonne High School in the class of 2021, Petra Ghali, said recent comments by several teachers disparaging the Turning Points USA High School Civics Club has misrepresented the club's activities. It was founded three years ago when the club has been largely involved in discussions about social issues, such as socialism versus capitalism. But at the recent September 29th meeting at the Bayonne Board of Education, several teachers sought to have the club banned from, from the high school, claiming that the founder of National Turning Points USA, Charlie Kirk, has been accused of supporting white extremist groups, which is not true. Again, Al Sullivan, great reporting here. Now, according to the program's website, Turning Points USA's national field program exists to educate students about the importance of limited government, free markets, and capitalism. Through grassroots activism and peer-to-peer -peer conversations, Turning Points USA activists promote and rebrand conservative values on their campuses. Turning Points USA currently has over 1,400 chapters on college and high school campuses across the country. Folks, I had the pleasure of meeting Charlie Kirk and Candace Owens at Rutgers University when Turning Points USA came there for their college tour back in November of 2018. They're not white supremacists, they're not racist. What they're trying to do is advocate for basic commonsensical policies, right? Free markets, capitalism, believing in, you know, that you took high school biology, right? Because there's only two genders, right? You know, top 25 or whatever, okay? Or the idea that, oh, science is real. Science is convenient to liberals and people like that when it suits them. Because when they want to engage in climate hysteria, folks, Aquaman's not coming to your house anytime soon because your house is going to be underwater, okay? Um, at the same time, you know what? The idea that there's more than two genders is asinine. But these are the sort of the curriculum that we're, that's being taught in public schools now, that's, being, that, that's having educators indoctrinate the youngest of children, 
So when Turning Points USA wants to create chapters at high schools and college campuses, they're trying to promote common sense, common sense solutions. But you wouldn't know that because some of these teachers at Bayonne High School are just as clueless as their progressive and liberal counterparts. That's dangerous, folks. School's about educating, not indoctrinating. But you wouldn't know that at Bayonne High School. Lastly, folks, it's still October and it's still Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I want to thank everyone who came out to Mama Juana by the River in West New York last week for the 13th edition of A Professor's Quest to Save Breasts. And since 2008, this event has raised $55,410 to benefit the American Cancer Society and more importantly, making strides against breast cancer. And certainly throughout the month of October, I'm proud to partner with the Union City Local PBA number eight. And coming up on Saturday morning, October the 23rd at the Light Rail Station located on 49th Street and Bergenline Avenue in Union City, folks, I'll be joining them for their annual boot drive from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. We'll be selling shirts, other merchandise there, and of course, proceeds from the sales benefit the American Cancer Society and of course, also a professor's quest to save breasts. I can't say enough, ladies and gentlemen, how grateful I am to everyone who attended last week, my amazing co-hosts, the DJs who played outstanding music all night long, and all of my guests who bought raffle tickets, who donated, and of course, danced the night away at Mama Juana Cafe by the river, of course, all for a good cause. We'll continue throughout the month of October, folks, on this program, highlighting the importance of breast cancer awareness. And again, coming up on Saturday morning, October the 23rd, join me and Union City police officers, again, representing the Union City local PBA number eight for this amazing event. Once again, outside, and again, should be weather permitting, right? Mid-October, some sun, maybe a little brisk, a little chilly autumn morning, but you know what? That's not going to deter us from raising money to hopefully defeat breast cancer once and for all. When you have three children who are police officers, you worry about them every day, but you are also proud. Under Mayor Fulop, 70% of new officers in Jersey City have been minorities. Mayor Fulop also upgraded our public safety cameras with over 200 new cameras and body cameras on officers, protecting citizens and police officers. Steve Fulop is my kind of mayor. And that's our show for this week. To check out all the excellent programming brought to you by the leader in independent media right here in Hudson County, the Hudson Media Group, please go to their website, www.hmgtvshows.com, as well as www.livestream.com slash hmgtv. And you can also check out the Hudson Media Group on YouTube. And don't forget to make sure you like them on Facebook. And of course, follow the Hudson Media Group on Instagram and Twitter. Ladies and gentlemen, always, you can rely on the five-time award-winning podcast, Talk in the Hudson, by going to www.blogtalkradio.com slash Talk in the Hudson from any PC, Mac, smartphone, or tablet. Recent guests have included Tap Into columnist Al Sullivan, Hudson County Democratic Chairwoman Amy DeGees, Jersey City Times founder and editor Aaron Morrill, and Jersey City Chief Prosecutor and Wardy Council candidate Jake Hudna, as well as many more. Folks, these exclusives you won't find anywhere else. Of course, check me out on Instagram at Professor Fernando Uribe. Also on Twitter at No Filter Uribe. I love getting comments. I appreciate all the new follows, and I know a lot of you enjoy my Instagram stories. So keep the comments coming. And of course, folks, if it's unbiased, unfiltered, and unafraid, it's always talking politics right here with the Hudson Media Group. I'm New Jersey's premier journalist and the sworn enemy of local liberals, toxic progressives, social justice clowns, and woke fools, Fernando Uribe. Saying so long, and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to catch Fernando's podcast at blogtalkradio.com slash talk on the Hudson. New episodes available every Wednesday night at 9 p.m.